Hey there and welcome to a new tutorial where we're going to make the knight as our final chess piece in Blender. So without any further to do, let's hop straight into it. The first thing I'm going to do is first of all move this back. Because uh, we are going to actually import another reference photo that will replace the knight. Because um, I want things to be a lot easier for you. So I'm just going to copy this here and I'm going to bring it over here. And I've been attempting to remake this knight here and I kind of managed it a few times by sculpting it and uh, sculpting is kind of not the way you want to go about this uh, because sculpting is something that is very hard to teach people so in order to get something easy as but still something that still looks good I decided to import another reference photo where we can model instead of sculpting so I'm just going to drag and drop it over here and basically scale it so that this piece here uh, is the same size as this here. I'm going to uh, link this picture in the description, it's from Pinterest, uh, all credits go to the owner uh, or the maker of this one, so a hey, all Gucci. Okay, now this is roughly the same size I'd say, let me see, starts about here, yeah, it's roughly the same size, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm going to position it over here. Okay, I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller. Uh, whoopsie. So that it actually fits the reference a little bit better. Something like this. I'm going to not make the ears, or you can make the ears, but I'm just not going to. Instead, instead of the ear, I'm going to make this thing. I don't know what you call it in English, but yeah, that. So I'm just going to hide this because we're not going to need it. And I'm going to basically import a plane. So shift A and plane rotated by 90 degrees on the X axis and make it a bunch smaller. So I'm just going to go into this, uh, into this wireframe shading view and basically align this as best I can. Now in edit mode, I'm just going to go into vertex selection mode and basically bring this over here. Getting everything right, like uh, to the point, is not really that important because there is room for artistic freedom, but you just want to align it roughly so you get something that looks like a horse. Um, now I'm just going to extrude this a few times, making sure to align this here. Now it's very hard to see what you're doing if you're not in vertex selection mode, so let's just quickly do this. Going to bring it up to about here get this to here bring this in and this is probably too little topology so i'm gonna add an edge loop so Control r and bring this in here a little bit so you just want to watch the guidelines make sure everything is aligned uh, as best you can maybe another one here this one can stay where it is because it's basically uh one sharp extrusion here or our cutaway and I'm going to bring this out here. Now that is basically looking fine. What I'm going to do next is um, something that people that know topology might be cringing at, but uh, let me just add one more here because it looks weird. So people that know topology would maybe just like go like this and uh, basically extrude uh, or ask me why I haven't gone like this and then extrude it outwards. Basically, I'm not gonna do that. I don't want the loop to go like around uh, around the entire statue, like the entire figure. I want it to be a little bit different. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So I'm just going to position this about here and this about here. And basically what that, uh, what that, has me needing to do is basically insert a few loops like this in order to like um, get my desired um, shape that I want but that is basically not that important so I'm going to show you what you need to do just select this edge here and basically extrude it to up here then another one to here and another one to here and another one to here and maybe now it should be time for some cleanup. I'm gonna add an edge loop here, bring this down here, this one or two over here. 
can add one here. Oops. Bring that one to over here. Just line it up as best you can. Doesn't have to be perfect, really. Now another one, the last one to here. Now once we subdivide it, it's going to look one hell of a lot different. Uh, basically like this. And uh, that is basically one of the reasons why I chose to do it this way. Um, and now let me just uh, neaten this up here. Now one thing you need to know is... Uh, you're not going to get away with having little topology here. You're going to have to, uh, to, you're going to have, uh, bruh. You're going to need three levels of subdivision. Yes. English is hard. So let's just make this look as neat as we can. You basically want to line it up really well. Maybe this is not enough. I'm just going to try and make this look as best as I can. Something along these lines here. Yeah, I'm going to need one last extrusion. So I'm going to take these here. whoop the and whoops. doop the like this. That's basically all set. Okay, now what we need to do is basically, um, I'm going to move this back, one hell of a lot. And uh, basically we have the shape here, which is already really, really good, but it's 2D. I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm going to get a mirror modifier, uh, which is right here. Bring it above the subdivision. Uh, click on the Y axis, disable the X, and now we basically have something that looks really weird. We can just select the cylinder and now it should be fine. Exactly. Now basically position it uh, something like this. It's very hard to see because uh, the shape just blends into one another. But basically you want to get all of this, bring it over here, enable clipping because if you don't it's going to look weird like so. Then uh, remove the faces or delete the faces by pressing X and then faces. And now look at that. It basically looks like a horse. Yes. Nice. Okay. Now you can see uh, the numbers of subdivision really matter because right here, what you what you can notice is you have some stepping issues by just increasing it to three get rid of a lot of those stepping issues when you're when you're close up uh, of course it's not perfect you would kind of need four or more but for not really that close-up shots you can just go get away with three now basically this nose here is way too wide and we're going to have some tweaking um, done to this but first of all let me just get one over here which is going to help us uh, basically what we want to do is give it uh, this ponytail or whatever you call this. I have no clue what you call that. I'm sorry. Uh, basically what you want to do is get everything to right about here. Could also go all the way down, but I'm just going to not do that. Maybe this one as well. Then extrude faces along normals and bring it outwards like so. And look at that. Looks fabulous already looks a lot more like a horse and we can get rid of this we're not going to need it anymore now let's give it this filigrane horsey like a look I'm just going to whoops uh old and h nope uh old and h it's not doing it uh shift h yes shift h to delete uh to hide everything except that one and now while we, uh, while we still have this here, we can basically get a lot going. We can now tweak everything. I'm going to just go into uh, vertex select mode. And now I'm going to get those here and move them out like so. And I'm going to move those here in in order to get a rounded nose, which already makes it look a lot better and basically now this is really up to you what you want to do and what you don't want to do I'm going to add in another edge loop of 
course you need to make sure that this here still looks kind of roundish so I'm just going to do that just move it a little bit and basically what you want to do is tweak things around make the make it look a lot more like a horse so I'm just going to get these here bring them down and bring them out a little bit to give it like that little cheek here uh, now what else can we do what else can we do we can basically get this here if we disable the subdivision it's going to look awful by the way uh, but it doesn't really matter that much oops not that one yep we're good bring it in a little bit more yeah that looks about right now I would like this here to be a little bit sharper so I'm just going to move it in a little bit like so so we get this move uh, this little uh, line moving across here a little movement what we can also do is just bring this in here as well make this smoother the transition Now basically what we're trying to do is block things out there is not one specific rule set uh, so you can really experiment with it and see what sticks basically you want to make the face a little bit more dynamic and I don't really like uh, doing organic modeling because I kind of suck at it but um, There is a technical part to it as well, and I kind of enjoy doing technical things. It's, it's what I like. Just hard surface stuff. Now we can give this some sharpness as well, which makes it look like an eyebrow. Like here would be the eye socket. I think we should get a little bit sharpness in here. Not that much though. Something along these lines. Now, basically what we want to do is, I'm going to now apply the mirror modifier and um, delete the bottom faces here. So just like this, faces, and um, if you enable the, 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 what is it called, statistics, and uh, get into edge selection mode and select these here, you can see we have 12 edges, which is not that much. We're going to need a few more. So I'm just going to bevel this once. That should leave us with 14. Yeah, we're going to need one more. So just bevel it and give it one segment more. The, uh, the reason why I'm beveling it is so I can have this roundness here on the top. And um, basically we want to be left off with 16 vertices here or 16 edges when we select the bottom, uh, bottom thing here. Uh, because, uh, because we want to uh, attach it to our uh, 16 edge, I think it's 16 hopefully, yeah, or to our 16 edge base here. And that is not going to be possible if we have less or more than 16 edges on the bottom of the horse. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go, press N, then edit, loop tools, and by the way, this is an add-on that you need to enable, it comes free with Blender, just go to edit, preferences, and then search for loop tools, check the box here. You should be having the same windows, so when you press N for North Pole, you just go to Edit, Loop Tools, and then Circle, which automatically transforms this here into a circle. Just make sure that your item scale is at 1. So apply the scale by Control A, Scale, and it should set to 1. Let's try that again. Uh, edit, Circle, because sometimes it may cause weirdness uh, if you don't have it set correctly. And basically now we want to align it with the other hole, which is going to be really hard doing it this way. So let's just get all of this, get all of this, get all of this, and this, press H. Yeah, let me try something else. Yep, in vertex mode it looks a lot, uh, it is a lot easier. So now we want to basically scale this ring here in rotate it around until we basically get a neat fit 
The objective is to make the vertices align as best we can. This here looks to be about good, good enough. Or is it good enough? Scale this a little bit more. Will it overlap here a little bit? You basically want to have it as neat as you can. Uh, and right now it seems to line up very, very good with all of the uh, all of these. So I'm just going to Alt H to unhide it. Whoopsie. Uh, and select it. Or what can we do? What can we do? Uh, we're going to just select this here then shift click on this the base and control j uh, which is going to disable the subdivision but we can turn it back on here and set it to three which is not a big deal at all but what that enables us to do is to just go here to snapping then vertex and then snap it to the height of this vertex by just going g and then z and then hovering over this here that will snap all of the vertices to the height of this here what that enables us to do is just to press A, merge by distance. So F3, merge by merge by distance. And it should be selecting all of it. If not, if you don't see 16 vertices removed here, then just increase it until it says 16. Now, this is basically looking bad. Why is it looking bad? Because we have inverted topology. Uh, face orientation you can see that the entire face uh, or the entire horse is red and this is blue and the subdivision doesn't really know what to do and that is why the shading also looks really really bad around the connecting area in order to fix this just go into edit mode select everything by pressing a and then shift n now you can see the subdivision really does a good job at smoothing this out and the, uh, and the shading also looks a lot better now the next thing I'm going to do is sharpen this up by giving this an edge loop. So control R and move it down and one more over here without snapping of course. And now it is connected neatly. Okay nice. Now we have a horse. You can tweak it uh, a little bit. You could give the, the body some dimension. So you could just select those here and those here. S, Y, bring it out like so, in order to give the body some shape. Like this, maybe not that much. You could also just take this vertex, which is hidden, and this vertex, which is hidden, and scale it out as well. I'm not in vertex selection mode, so that is ra a rather bit stupid in it. So let's try this one and this one. And that gives it a little bit more dynamic. But you get the point. You can just uh, tweak stuff yourself, move it around. You should be getting good results. But even this here looks great. And it really fits with the rest. So I hope you liked this tutorial. I hope you liked the series. Uh, leave a like if you did. If you didn't, just leave a dislike. Or just don't do anything. I don't care really. Uh, I just hope I helped you make a little chess piece. I will see you in the next tutorial. See ya. Bye.